Turn back the clock to yesterday. Jack Benny asked his cast to drop in for an early rehearsal. And at the moment, we find Rochester in the library preparing for their arrival. Oh, man, Benny. That old man, Benny. He won't raise nothing and don't stand nothing. He just keeps rolling. He keeps on rolling along. Rochester. Can it be the trees that fell? Rochester. Oh, no, it isn't. I've been calling you. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I was scared away with my voice. Oh, fine. <laughs> well, I'm becoming quite a popular singer. You know, they call Bing Crosby the groaner. Uh-huh. And they call Andy Russell the swooner. I know, I know. What do they call you? The razor's edge. <laughs> sound more like the yearling. <laughs> now, Rochester, my cast should be, uh, my cast uh, should be here soon for rehearsal. <laughs> my cast comes later, by the way. Have you got, have you got everything ready? Yes, sir. Uh, I've got the chair, the scripts, and the pencil. Good. And I filled the Coca-Cola machine and turned off the water. <laughs> Turn the water on again. At our last rehearsal, Miss Livingston fainted. Nobody had a nickel. We had an awful time bringing her to. <laughs> anyway, this is the holiday season, and I'd like to serve them the eggnog I told you to make this morning. You did make it, didn't you? Yes, sir. Is it good? Want to smell my breath? No. <laughs> no, no, I'm on the wagon. But you know, Rochester, that's a... <laughs> Roger, that's a strange drink. I wonder why anyone would ever think of mixing eggs and bourbon. It's purely psychological, boss. Psychological? Yeah. You see, the eggs make you think you're getting something very helpful. Uh-huh. And the bourbon makes that fact unimportant. <laughs> well, that's logical. By the way, Rochester, how much eggnog did you make? About 100 and 250 gallons. 250 gallons? For goodness sake, well, I don't want to drink it. I mean, I, want to, I don't want to bathe in it. <laughs> I want to drink it. I don't want to bathe in it. Don't look at me like that. I defy your next line to get a laugh. Well, to each his own. <laughs> you fooled me. All right, all right. Uh, make some sandwiches, too. Yes, sir. Come away with me, Lucille, in my merry Oldsmobile. I'll get it, Rochester. You can go as far as you like with me in my merry Oldsmobile. I think I'll get a green one. It blends into the sagebrush on Mulholland Drive. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Come on in. You're the first one here. Jack, how come you call rehearsal so early? Well, Mary, I, uh, well, to tell you the truth, I have a date tonight with Gladys Abisko. Gladys Abisko? Oh, Jack, surely you can do better than that. Look, Mary, Gladys is very nice. She may not be the most beautiful girl in the world, but she's got a nice figure. I know, but does she have to walk that way? Mary, that's not her fault. She's nearsighted, and she anticipates the curb in the middle of the block. Anyway, we're going to have a nice time. I'm taking her to a nightclub. <laughs> Slapsy Maxie? Slapsy Maxie's with Gladys? Not after what happened last time. Well, Jack, it wasn't the manager's fault that people came up to her and said, May I have your autograph, Maxie? <laughs> Imagine mistaking Gladys for Slapsy Maxie. She's only got one cauliflower here. <laughs> By the way, Mary, would you like a glass of eggnog? Oh, sure, Jack. I'd love to have a... Wait a minute. Who made the eggnog? Rochester. Uh-uh. Why? What's the matter? Well, last Christmas, I tasted some of Rochester's eggnog, and the next thing I knew, I was at the Rose Bowl game. Oh, you saw the game? Saw it, nothing. I was playing left tackle for Alabama. Stop kidding. Now, come on, have one. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Dennis. What time is rehearsal? At uh, one o'clock. Well, what time is it now? A quarter to one. Oh, then I guess I won't have enough time to shave. Well, Dennis, why should it take you 15 minutes to shave? I haven't got the fuzz yet. <laughs> oh, for 
heaven's sake. It takes me three months to get a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> all right, all right. Now hurry over here. Goodbye. Goodbye. All that fuzz over a little fuzz. <laughs> Jack, was that Dennis on the telephone? Yeah, it was me. Yeah, he's a... Dennis! <laughs> Now, how'd you get here so quickly? I was on the extension in the kitchen. Oh. I would have been here sooner, but I couldn't get a cab. Stop that. <laughs> now, Dennis, will you stop being so silly and have a glass of eggnog? Oh, boy, eggnog. That's for me. Uh, wait a minute. Who made that eggnog? Rochester. Uh-uh. Why not? Last Christmas, I tasted some of Rochester's eggnog, and the next thing I knew, Mary was playing in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Say, Dennis, I meant to ask you, how do you like your broadcast on its new time? Oh, swell. We did our first one last Wednesday, and we have a new slogan for the program. Slogan? Yeah. Listen to Dennis Day on Wednesday. <laughs> hey, that's cute. Listen to Dennis Day on Wednesday. Wouldn't it be awful if my name was Hoffenpfeffer? <laughs> Listen to Hoffenpfeffer on Waffenpfeffer Day. Yeah, tune in next week at the same Hoffenpfeffer, I know. Say, Jack, right. I forgot to tell you I got a note from Mama yesterday. Mama, you did? Well, what did the Judy Canova of Plainfield <laughs> have to say? Huh? She was very excited about my sister Babe taking my place on the program. Really? But you know, Jack, you made a mistake when you announced that it was Babe's first appearance. Mary, you mean your sister's been on the radio before? Uh-huh. Mama said Babe's been on the bride and groom program four times. Four times? And she wants to go on again, but they won't let her. Why? Because every time they pause ten seconds for station identification, the groom gets away. <laughs> Holy... Holy smoke, what does Babe do? What can she do? She leans into the microphone, calls Dr. IQ, and says, I'll take that gentleman you have in the balcony. <laughs> Mary, if I didn't know your sister, babe, I'd think you were making the whole thing up. Huh? Come in! Hello, Jack, Mary, Dennis. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, hello, Don. Hi again. Come on in, Don. We're about ready to rehearse. Uh, Jack, before we do anything, I, I want to show you something. What? Look! Don, you're wearing the shoelaces I gave you for Christmas. <laughs> How nice. Don, you can take the card off. Everybody knows who gave them to you. Well, I'm not taking it off. I want to make sure people know what a cheap gift Jack gave me. What? Thirteen years I've been with you, Jack. Thirteen years. And you show your appreciation with a lousy pair of shoelaces. Well. <laughs> That's. That's certainly gratitude for you. What are you complaining about, Don? That certainly wasn't such a hot gift you sent me. What did he send you, Jack? A gold watch. <laughs> a wristwatch, yet. Well, what's wrong with a gold watch? What's wrong with it? You walk down the street wearing an expensive thing like that, somebody hits you over the head, takes it away from you, and your money, too. <laughs> Anyway, Don, let's shake hands and forget the whole thing. Okay, Jack, I I'm sorry I lost my temper. Oh, that's all right, Don. All... By the way, uh, would you like a glass of eggnog? Eggnog? Say, that's one of my favorite... Uh, wait a minute, who made it? Rochester. Uh-uh. <laughs> What's the matter with Rochester's eggnog? Last Christmas I tasted some, and the next thing I knew, Dennis, Dennis was, was playing, playing Mary in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Everybody comes in with the same thing. Hi, Jackson. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Bill. Hi, everybody. Hey, Jackson. What? Hey, what's the idea of calling the rehearsal so early? Well, I'm going to a nightclub, Bill. I got a date. With a girl? <laughs> what do you think? A horse? Well, it could be. Could be. They're running at Santa Anita again, and oats are cheaper than orchids. <laughs> You ought to be with Joan Crawford and John Garfield. You're so humorous. <laughs> oh, I love you. Phil, Phil, why don't you jump in the lake and see if that point on your head will write underwater? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, come on, Jack. Everyone's here. Let's get on with the rehearsal. Okay. Oh, by the way, Phil, would you like a glass of uh, glass of eggnog? Eggnog? Now you're talking, Bubber. Eggnog. Where's the? Hey, wait a minute. Who made that eggnog? Rochester. Oh, lead me to it. <laughs> Oh, Rochester, will you pour a glass of eggnog for Mr. Harris? Yes, sir. Here you are, Mr. Harris. Oh, thank you, Roch. Oh, this looks wonderful. Shangri-La with a head on it. <laughs> hey, uh, tell me something, Roch. Uh, how'd you make this eggnog? How do you use one egg to five quarts of bourbon? <laughs> one to five, huh? Well, here's down the hatch. <laughs> Mr. Harris! Mr. Harris! Mr. Harris, what happened? Are you sure that egg was fresh? (laughs) Drink it down, Mr. Harris. The first sip's the hardest. Okay, here goes. Well, Phil, how do you like it? Phil, how do you like it? Jackson, what are you doing here at the Rose Bowl? (laughs) I'm not at the Rose Bowl yet. Rochester, pour me a ticket. Well, Buddy Young, what are you doing here? <laughs> Look, Phil, you had your drink, you had your joke. Now, let's get on with the rehearsal. Dennis, we'll have your song first. Okay. Well, now, come on, kids. Let's rehearse the script and make it quick so I can leave early. Say, would any of you kids like to join us? I'm taking Gladys to a nightclub. Oh, thanks, Jack, but I can't make it. Me either. I'd like to go, Jack. Okay. How about you, Dennis? Sure, fine. I'll take Mary. Oh, that'll be swell. Say, Mary, will you give me a kiss when I take you home? <laughs> well, I don't know, Dennis. I'll think about it. Well, think fast, sister. I ain't blowing my dough for nothing. <laughs> I heard that line in the movies, but I never had a chance to use it before. I'm glad you got it off your chest. Now, kids... Hey, Jackson, what are you going out tonight for? Why don't you wait till New Year's Eve? No, Rochester and I always celebrate New Year's Eve at home. At home? Yes! Five minutes to twelve, I tiptoe up to Mr. Berry's room, wake him up, he blows a horn, falls back on the pillow, and that's it. Yeah. (laughs) What are you laughing at, Mary? You just can't get away from it, can you, Jack? Away from what? The horn blows at midnight. <laughs> oh, cut it out, will you, kids? We've got a... Oh, my goodness, look what time it is. I'll tell you what. We can all go over the script tomorrow morning. i got to leave now and pick up Gladys. Come on, Mary. Come on, Dennis. Let's go. <laughs> You'll never get a table in this nightclub. It's too crowded. Yeah, look at all those people in that little room. Boy, are they jammed together. That's the coat room. (laughs) Those are coats. Oh, I wondered why they didn't have their pants on. (laughs) Never mind. I'll get a table. Come on, Gladys. Right behind you, Stevie. Good. Now, let's see. Where's the head waiter? Oh, mister. Mister. Yeah. Are you the head waiter? Well, what do you think I am in this tuxedo? A shill for porous lawn? <laughs> look, look, I'd like to get a table for four. Well, thank heavens you didn't ask for five. Why? I wouldn't sit with you for a million dollars. <laughs> And get us a table. All right, walk this way. It's an old gag, but I'll try. <laughs> come on, come on, kid. Uh, 
Here you are, folks. Say, this is a pretty good table at that, isn't it, Gladys? It sure is, Speedy. Boy, what a crowd. Mary, where are you sitting? Right behind you, Speedy. Oh, well, pull your chair over. Well, kids, come on, let's order. Pardon me, folks, pardon me, but have you seen my wife? No, no, we haven't seen her. Oh, well, thank you, and a happy new year. The same to you. Now, let's see, what do I... I don't know what I want Ladies and gentlemen, this is Herbie Vigran, your master of ceremonies for the evening. Now, now, in just a minute, we're going to have some dancing. But while the orchestra is setting up, I've got a little joke for you. Hey, this guy looks pretty sharp, doesn't he, Gladys? I've only got eyes for you, CD. <laughs> I know. Oh, brother. Now, a funny thing happened on the way to the club tonight. A panhandler stopped me on the street and said, Hey, mister, would you give me $50 for a cup of coffee? So I said to him, $50 for a cup of coffee? And he said, Yeah, I want to drink it at the Rose Bowl game. What a lousy joke. Huh? I wonder if Fred Allen knows this guy stealing his stuff. That was awful, wasn't it, Gladys? Ain't it the truth? Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, everybody dance! What do you say we dance, kid? Come on, Dennis, get up. Gee, I'd love to, but what will the girls do? <laughs> I mean, you dance with Mary. Gladys and I'll sit this one out. Come on, Dennis. Gee, you're a swell dancer, Mary. Well, thanks, Dennis, but don't hold me so tight. Okay. Say, Libby, have you ever thought about getting married? What? I got my own show now, you know. <laughs> oh, Dennis, stop being silly. If you turn me down, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Dennis, you're crazy, but you're kind of cute. Gladys, should we get up on the floor and show them something? A little later, Speedy. Let's sit here just the two of us. Okay. Say, Speedy, do you mind if I hold your hand? No. Nah. I'd love you to, Gladys. Thanks. Gee, Speedy, your hand is as smooth as silk. You've got my tie. <laughs> you know, Gladys, when we're holding hands, I feel like a heel. Oh, sugar boy, don't talk like that. Well, I can't help it. I never should have let you take that job. The pipe wrench has skinned your knuckle. <laughs> I know, but thanks to me, West Los Angeles has sewers now. <laughs> By the way, it was thoughtful of you to send me the perfume for Christmas. That's all right. Anyway, it won't be long now. Three more miles, the pipe will be out of the beach, and you can quit. Yeah. Pardon me, folks, pardon me, but have you seen my wife? No, no, we haven't. Oh, well, thank you, and a happy new year. Same to you, same to you. Come on, Gladys, let's dance. Right behind you, Speedy. Say, this is swell music, isn't it, Gladys? You said it. Yeah. I love dancing with you. Da 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 dum beam bum dee da 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 I thought you looked shorter. <laughs> the night is young, the skies are clear, and if you want to go walking, be rich, delightful, it's delicious. Hey, look, it's my quartet. LFM, OMFG, OLFF, that's for me. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delightful. You can tell at a glance what a swell night this is for romance. You can hear. Mm. That's my quartet, the sportsmen. So this is where they're working. Well, folks, are you ready to order your dinner? Yeah, I'm hungry. What do you have, Gladys? Wreck a pier on a raft, save the grease. <laughs> Gladys, this isn't a drive-in. Waiter, she wants scrambled eggs on toast. What do you have, Mary? I don't think they've got them here, but I'd like a chiswee sandwich. <laughs> hey, 
Uh, yes, ma'am. Shall I fill the holes with mustard, or do you like to play peekaboo? <laughs> Bring the mustard on the side. We'll ad lib. <laughs> now, let's see. I think I'll have a crab meat Louis. You order, Dennis. I'll have spaghetti Louis. <laughs> spaghetti Louis? I thought that was the waiter's name. <laughs> Of course not. It is, too. <laughs> Louie? No, spaghetti. Oh, uh, well, hurry the food, waiter. Pardon me, folks. Pardon me, but have you seen my wife? No, no, we haven't seen your wife. Well, if you ever do, you'll know why I started drinking. <laughs> what? Huh? Here we are. I didn't think he was going to come down that time. What a guy. Before we start our Gala Floor Show, I'd like to say that we're honored tonight by having with us a very famous celebrity. Oh, I wish they'd leave me alone in this place. <laughs> this gentleman whom you all love is a very popular star of stage, screen, and radio. Gladys, let me have your comb. Here you are. So I take great pleasure in presenting to you that popular idol of millions, Rodney Dangerfield. What? You have to be sitting at the next table. You've all seen Mr. Dangerfield in those outstanding Western pictures, and with a little encouragement, maybe we can get him to say a few words. Thank you, folks. Thank you kindly. It sure is a thrill and a pleasure to meet so many of my fans. <laughs> what a ham. And I'd like to say that my next picture, Hop Along Shapiro... <laughs> It's going to be even better than my last picture, The Cactus Blooms at Midnight. So that for me. And now, friends, I'd like to introduce my co-star who's right here at the table with me. Take a bow, Desert Payne. How do you like that? He even brought his horse. Gladys, give me your handkerchief. Thanks. Anyway, you folks didn't come to hear me talk all night. So I just wanted to... Pardon tell you... me, Mr. Dangerfield. Would you please put your autograph on this menu? Why, certainly, miss. Thank you. <laughs> so, folks, I just want to wish you a very happy and prosperous new year. Imagine introducing a ham like Rodney Dangerfield. Come on, kids, let's get out of here. But, Jack, we ordered food. I don't care what we ordered. Let him give it to the horse. I'm going home. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another celebrity with us tonight. None other than Jack Benny. Well. Are you going to stay now, Jack? Certainly. What are you mad about? <laughs> Sit down, Gladys. Ladies and gentlemen... Master of Ceremonies, my worthy colleague, Mr. Dangerfield, and... <laughs> Why don't you turn your head? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for a moment I want you to forget that I'm Jack Benny, that scintillating star of stage, screen, and radio. I want to talk to you as one of your friends. I want to take this opportunity to wish all of you and yours and everybody all over the world good health and happiness throughout the year. And now I'd like to tell you just a few things about my next picture. My next picture is going to be even later. Guests next week will be Miss Lauren Bacall. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> 